I'm Bob Duhamel, and today I'm going to talk about voltage and polarity in a series circuit. Now, a series circuit, which we've already discussed, is a circuit where there is only one possible current path in the circuit. So let's make a fairly simple series circuit. Here is a battery or other voltage source. This could be a power supply, a battery, whatever is supplying some voltage. And let's just put some resistors around it and see how the voltage and polarity behave in the circuit. Let's make this, oh, let's make this a 40 volt battery. And let's make this a 20 ohm resistor, just to make the numbers easy. Let's make this a 15 ohm resistor and make that a, if we can make a number five here, a five ohm resistor. Now I did that just so the numbers would add up. So 20 plus 15 plus five equals 40. That's just going to make the numbers real easy. So if I have 40 volts and how much total resistance do I have? Well, in a series circuit, you simply add the resistors up. So I have 20 plus 15 plus five, that equals 40 ohms. So how much current do I have? Well, if you know your voltage, you divide into it. 40 goes into 40, gives us one amp of current. Now let's look at the voltage polarities in this circuit. This is a current source. It's a battery, it's a power supply, something that produces some voltage. It could be a photocell, which is a type of battery, or it could be a power supply that plugs into the wall. But whatever it is, it's a voltage producer. It's a power, it's a power producer, not a power consumer. And so if we look at this, we see that the current is exiting the producer in this direction. We're talking about conventional current. Remember in this class, like most of the electronics industry and the academic world, we use conventional current, which is an imaginary current that goes from positive to negative, making positive higher than negative. It's just easier to wrap our minds around what goes on in a circuit if we use conventional current. In reality, we have electrons going the opposite direction, but nobody follows those anymore. So let's, let's pretend that the electricity is going the opposite direction, higher voltage, down to a lower voltage that pushes the current around the circuit this way, sucks it in here, blows it back out, and round and round the current goes. So if we look at where the current exits the source, what's the polarity? Well, just because we can, let's use a red pin here. That's going to be the higher voltage because that's what's pushing it out. Higher voltage pushes it out, lower voltage sucks it back in. So we represent our higher voltage by positive, lower voltage by negative, and so the power producer, the positive is where the current exits the producer and the negative is where the current enters the producer. Now here is a power consumer. This is a resistor, but other circuits work the same. If they're not producing voltage or not producing current, they are a consumer. So this consumes it. And as we've talked about many times, where we have a resistor or other power consumer, the voltage is higher where the conventional current enters the consumer and lower where it exits. So notice the reverse in polarity. Here, the higher voltage is where it enters and the lower voltage is where it exits. So plus is the higher voltage, negative is the lower voltage. So current enters here, exit here. And so we have the higher voltage where the current enters and the lower voltage where the current exits. And we have the same thing around the rest of the circuit. So positive where the current enters the resistor and negative where the current exits the resistor. So we have positive where the current exits a source, positive where it enters a consumer. So all of these have opposite polarities to the current source. So that's the basics of the polarity in a series circuit. Now while we're at it, let's uh, take another quick look at Kirchhoff's voltage law. Because the way that Kirchhoff's voltage law is stated in the classical way, we have a number of voltages in a series circuit and those voltages should add up to zero. Now the way I explain Kirchhoff's voltage law is that we have a producer and consumers and the voltages across your resistors or your consumers must add up to the source voltage. Does that work? Yeah, that's why I picked these voltages. We have 20 volts there, 15 volts there, and 
5 volts there. 20 plus 15 plus 5 equals 40. Yes, those voltages do add up. And that's the way I explain Kirchhoff's voltage law. But the classical way of stating it is that the voltages must add up to zero. So here we have positive 40 volts. Take that 40. And then we have negative 20, negative 15, and negative 5. So notice if the polarity is this way, it's positive. If we flip it, it's negative. So we have one positive voltage and then three negative voltages. So that's 40. So those must all add up to zero. So we have 40 plus minus 20 plus negative. This is a little tricky. Let's put it this way. Plus negative 20 plus negative 15 plus negative 5 and so 40 plus negative 20 plus negative 15 plus negative 5 all adds up to zero and that's the classical explanation of Kirchhoff's voltage law but I prefer to use my own explanation which is these voltages must add up to that voltage not worrying about the polarity because I think it's just a little easier to wrap our minds around uh, the way I explain what Kirchhoff's voltage law is. So anyway, the voltage is positive where it comes out of a producer, but it's positive where it goes into a consumer. So we have the voltage producer here. Voltage is positive where it comes out. Then we have the three consumers, positive where it goes in, positive where it goes in, positive where it goes in, negative where it comes out. And of course, uh, as we see in the behavior of series circuits, we have, we start off with 40 volts, we lose 20, lose 15, lose 5, and we're down to 0 volts, so all of our voltage has been consumed going around the loop. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.